Okay, so hello anyone out there who is watching this. Uh, if you do not know me, I don't know why you're on my channel, but my name is Taro, and I am a former arena leaderboard player, a really, really good le uh, arena player. And what I like to do is I like to do card reviews. I type up card reviews, and recently, the last year or so, I've been doing a lot more video card reviews just to get my thoughts out there. So this, se uh, this set is Manus at the Darkmoon Fair. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do that joke anymore. Anyways, so Madness at the Darkmoon Fair, newest set. It's different from the other sets. Normally, the other sets, if we go back to the previous sets, we have got cards that are just like super premium meta defining cards. Okay, Pen Flinger, it's a good card. And maybe not meta defining, but you'll see it a lot. Animated Broomstick, you'll see a lot. Uh, Panthara, you will see a lot. Transfer Student, incredibly good card. Sneaky Delinquent, good card. One maker, good card. Like these are all good cards. We got great cards here. Fishy Flyer is a great card. Steward of Scrolls, great card. Then we got the super premium cards here. Uh, Onyx Mage Scribe, Smug Senior, Plague Proto Jade. You see, there are so many good cards from Skullman's Academy, and that was a weak set comparatively. We go back here. We go back to Ashes of Outland. Uh, any of the Og Merchants are really good. Imprisoned Biofiend is really good. Bone Shore Brawler, really good. The three drops here. Uh, Shadow Weaver, uh, Overconfident Orc, really good. Scorpit, incredibly powerful. Uh, Rusty Raider, incredibly powerful. Sky Stalker, really powerful. Shavar, really powerful. Bone Shore Vanguard, really powerful. Uh, Scrap Yard Colossus, I'm not going to say really powerful, but it's one of those cards where if you get to play it and it doesn't get uh, silenced or anything like that, you win. And that, like, that's not even including the old sets. Like, if we go back over to the Son of Dragons, like, we we don't need to go over this. We don't, it's gone. The Son of Dragons is gone. I know, everyone's happy. Tyrant is gone. Draconid is gone. Evasive Worm is gone. I'm pretty sure there's, like, a Big Ol' Whelp is gone. Bat Rider, which, good card. It's gone. Poacher, you cannot even discover Poacher anymore. It's gone. So you can see, these are the old sets and the old sets have been really strong, really powerful with the neutral cards. And here, not so much. I mean, for Dark Moon Fair, a lot of these cards are either cards we have seen before, the mechanics we have seen before, they're uh, callbacks to previous sets, or their cards are just like fine, but not really great. So, uh, like, probably, like, the second best card in the set is this guy uh, among neutrals dark moon dirigible so this is a uh, three mana three two divine shield so better scarlet crusader basically equivalent to candle taker and if you corrupt it it gains rush and i mean that's good don't get me wrong that's an 80 card in the 80s but it's not really like game breaking this is not something like scorpid where you get a five two stealth and you, uh, if you kill something. The only other really, I would say, really good cards from the set. The Dark Moon Rabbit. It's 10 mana. It kills three things. Like, the fact that it's 10 mana is going to pull it back, but it definitely pulls its weight. It's going to be a good card. I know some people aren't sold on this. Dark Moon Rabbit's going to be a good card. And then this guy here, Claw Machine. And Claw Machine is like the best card in the set, but for neutrals, by far. And it looks insane. But it's just, it's a slightly best, better Evasive Worm. And Evasive Worm wasn't even the best card in its set. And it probably wasn't, uh, like, if you go to the Hearth Arena tier list, Evasive Worm, there was, like, probably, like, four or five neutrals that were better than it. So we got, like, one really, really, really strong card. We've got two cards that I would say are great, like an 80-plus card. And then everything else in the neutrals is stuff we've seen before. Uh, we've seen hand buff cards, so we know what hand buffs are. We've seen cards that give bonuses to Rush. Like, I still don't know why War Song Commander is a thing, but, like, look here. This is a, it's a strictly better War Song Commander, which I don't, uh, that, that, that brings up uh, PTSD for me. Okay, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna matter. That, okay, it'll matter a little bit, but this isn't going to be a card that's gonna be insane because of that effect. Prize Vendor. We've had Fish Flinger before. Two drop that draws a card, uh, generates a card for both players. Uh, we take a look here. Wiggling Horror. A good card. It's no Fungomancer. 
It's, it's better Argus, but this is not a fungal mancer. All right. So what I'm saying here, and th these are probably like the top 10 cards. Like some of these cards are in the top 10 cards. Like Horror is definitely a top 10 card. Uh, costume and Entertainer. I mean, I, I have my thing here. So I can take I can take a look at the top 10 cards. Like the I would say the fourth best card is probably this. Circus of Malvo. Which, four mana, four, five, taunt. And that looks really powerful. But we saw that last set with Groundskeeper and Shaman and Druid. And that card was better because if you had a spell, you could heal. So what I'm saying here is that Madness of the Dark Moon Fair, the cards, the power level of the cards, especially among neutrals, is going way down. That's number one. Number two. The cards that are leaving are Rise of Shadows, Saviors of Old Doom, the Sun of Dragons. Those three sets are not going to be in there. And what do those cards have? Really powerful cards. The Lackeys are gone. Hawksteed is gone. Uh, the really big one, Eccentric Scribe, is gone. Uh, Shovel Fist is gone. So you can see there are really... Batter, Batterhead, no people don't like it, but Batterhead, that was a really powerful card. That's gone. So... Like the Senate Dragons, Scarlet, uh, here, Dalaran Crusader. Uh, these are really good cards that are leaving the set. That was pr That's probably the weakest of the sets, and they've got like three or four cards that would say are better than the best card there. Like they're as good as the best card. Saviors of Old Doom, like look what's leaving. Uh, we take a look here, Tolvir, which was really powerful, came, could be really swingy. That's gone. Uh, let's see here, Zephyr, so thank that, thankfully that's gone, that matters. Uh, Candle Taker, premium three drop. History Buff, premium three drop. Volpera Scoundrel, Discover a Spell, that's gone. Uh, Bone Wraith, Bone Wraith, really good taunt, that's gone. Cards of Defender, uh, worse Bone Wraith, but good, uh, that's gone. Wrapped Golem and Pit Croc are gone. And I already went over to Sin of Dragons. So the cards that are leaving are gone, like they're really, really powerful cards. And the cards that are coming in are from Whispers of the Old Gods, which... Uh, just to, to give you an example of Whispers of the Old Cards, the power level of the cards there. This was an okay card in Whispers of the Gold, Old Gods. Two mana, three one, stealth. One second, there's Darkman Fair. Oh, sorry, not Darkman Fair, uh, Skullmance. I want Skullmance for this one. Skullmance. And. Sneak a Delinquent. Two mana, three one, stealth. Death Rattle, add a three one goes with stealth to your hand. Yeah, that's what the old sets are. If you go through the Whispers of the Old God set, like, it's just mediocre compared to what we've expected. I mean, you look at the two drops, we, you get one real, you get like two, two drops, because the Cthulhu card's still not going to be in there. Like Biofin Tidehunter, Twisted Warrior. Those are mediocre three drops. Swarm is good if you're rogue, but bad at anything else. Then you got Squirming Tentacle, like one three drop. Uh, Aberrant Berserker, that's not really a great four drop. You got some like situational four drops in Cyclopean Horror, Faceless Shambler, uh, Polluted Hoarder, Worst Loot Hoarder, uh, Twilight Summoner, Slow Card. It's not even close to power level. Like in Whispers of the Old Gods, you got, you got like four cards, really, that are going to matter there. Psychotron, just because it's Divine Shield Taunt. Nerubian Prophet, just because sometimes it's a zero mana four four or a, th a four uh, three mana three three or four mana two uh, sorry two mana four four. Corrupted Seer, just because it's neutral AOE, and Bog Creeper, and Bog Creeper probably isn't going to be all that great. Like Bog Creeper back in the day was a meta defining card, and now it would not be a top ten card right now. Like there's easily ten, probably fifteen cards, uh, common or rare, that I would rank above Bog Creeper. It's probably not even going to break an eighty. And that's it. So what we have here is, for the first time in a long time, with Madness and Darkman Fair, we have got uh, weak cards, weak neutrals. And on top of that, most of these neutrals are things we have seen before. So overall, the impact for uh, like each class from the neutrals is probably not going to be that great. Now, one thing that Darkman Fair is going for is the mechanic corrupt, which I'm just going to do this quickly. And I'll switch this over to all classes, just because it's easier there. 
and um, uh, mana low to high. Okay, no mana low to high, just most recent. Because I, 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 I wanted to look at this like mana low to high, uh, not class by class. All right, anyways here. So the corrupt mechanic, the classic one they gave us, which now that I did this here. Fleet Hoof Pearl Tusk. Five mana, four, four rush. This would be probably an average card. Corrupt, gain plus, pl plus four, plus four. So Corrupt, if you play a card that costs more than that, which means a six mana card or more, then it becomes Corrupted. And then it gets, like you can see here. No, you cannot see there. Can you see here? All right, well, okay, that's all you're going to get there. So you can see it gets like the tentacles, it gets the tendrils, things like that. So, eh, I mean, the mechanic here is, I'm going to say this, first off, ignoring whether or not it's good for arena, it's mostly well designed. Because it is hard to corrupt things. It is a lot harder than you expect. Number one, as I mentioned before, a lot of the really, really, really powerful high mana cards in neutrals that you would be drafting, those are gone. So those are cards that would get you back into the game, and those are cards that you would just pretty much always pick. So Tyrant, gone. Wrapped Golem, gone. Pit Croc, gone. Draconid, gone. Worm, gone. Uh, and then there's like other things that you wouldn't really uh, think about that are really powerful cards that are gone. Hold on, where? I have my list here. Uh, Dig Day, that's gone. Uh, Eccentric Scribe, that's gone. So seven cards that are like super premium cards that are all six mana and above that are gone. So the question is, what are you going to corrupt this with? So like the only, uh, like if you go back from the old, the cards are still in. Like Smug Senior is a good choice. Onyx Mage Scribe, people don't play that because they want to have the spell in hand to play it. Shivara, you don't play unless you're behind on board. So it's what? It's a Bone Chewer Vanguard, maybe? Bog Creeper? I mean, there aren't really that great of cards to corrupt with, which means your deck is not going to be focused on those heavy cards. Your deck is going to be lower, which means it's going to be difficult to corrupt this because not only you need to have this in your hand, then you have to have a play on five that is not better than this. Then you need to play that card. And then after all that, it takes a while, but then you get to swing. Then you get the plus four, plus four. And if you, take, if you go down the list, and this is why I wanted to sort it by mana, like you take to here, look here. Seven mana, corrupt, this costs zero, right? So that's, you get seven mana, you get a zero mana six, six, if you can play an eight drop with this in your hand, or eight mana card with this in your hand. Really, really strong. Carnival, Carnival Clown. Nine mana, four, four, benefits from hand buffs. Battle Cry, summon two copies of this corrupt, fill your board of copies. So instead of a 12, 12, you get potentially a 28, 28 worth of stats. And then more if you have hand buffs. So Carnival Clown, like you can see, really powerful. And then you take a look at the lower cards here. Uh, Warrior, one mana, corrupt. Give you draw a, draw, a, draw a rush minion. Corrupt, give it plus two, plus one. So you can see a five mana card, the corrupt is plus four, plus four. A one mana card, it's plus two, plus one. Why? Because this is easy to do. The trade-off is you can't play this on turn one. So, you see, Corrupt is balanced, in a sense, around the mana cost. Like, you look here, Firework Elemental, I hate this card, but the Corrupt is balanced. 5 mana, 3, 5, Battle Cry, deal 3 damage to a minion. That's really, really good. Corrupt, deal 12 damage instead, that's a Vile Spine Slayer. So you can see, but you still have to play a 6 mana card to activate this. And that's not always going to happen. Your hand's not going to allow it. Sometimes you have to spread rather than play that six mana card. Sometimes like you get this corrupted and by the time you've lost tempo and it's too late. So that that's one way that corrupt is balanced. Another way corrupt is balanced is like here, Dancing Cobra. Two mana, one five, corrupt, game poisonous. Uh, there was a card which uh, not, there was a card, uh, there, there are actually two cards. One was Venomancer, 
and one was a one man uh, sorry a five mana one five taunt that had poisons that was in cobalt and catacombs that i can't remember off the top of my head so you can see the corrupt turns this from a two mana card to a five mana card that seems like a really powerful corrupt effect the problem is this is a pretty bad two drop this is not a card you want to play on two this is not a card you want to necessarily keep in your opening hand unless you have a curve already so cards like this where the corrupt is where the value of the card is those cards they have stronger corrupt effects uh there's a neutral here darkman statue three minutes zero five your other minions have plus one attack corrupt this gains plus four attack again as a three drop it's useless you do not want to play this on three you're not going to have stuff on three to justify playing this so the value here is in the corrupt and when that happens that becomes a three mana uh, that becomes a yeti that buffs everything and that becomes like really really powerful so you can see th these are the way that this is where corrupt is balanced it's balanced number one in that the higher mana cost of card you have the stronger the corrupt effect is and number two in that the base stat of the minion impacts how strong the corrupt is because you got this that gives you plus four attack and you got this that gives you rush and i would argue rush is probably like one mana plus four attack is probably like two mana so you get two cards one is arguably a stronger corrupt effect than the other but one is much worse on curve than the other so from a balance point of view corrupt is balanced from a design point of view i'm not sure how balanced this is because again you take a look here firework elemental it's a solid card it's probably like an 80s card if it's not corrupted and if it is corrupted it becomes a 130 card so you can see here that is a incredibly massive swing where you can just play a five drop remove your opponent's minion and play another minion that's again vile spine and vile spine was insane so you take a look again like the really really powerful swing effects here from strongman from circus clown uh the paladin one carousel griffin you have a really powerful card and it's corrupt is to give you basically a 10 mana worth 10 mana worth of stats or maybe like nine mana yeah probably like nine mana because paladin has a uh, library of hope which is uh, an 8 8 divine shield taunt and that's nine mana and that heals three so you can see instead of instead of like an overpowered five drop you get a really really good nine drop so and with corrupt you can't necessarily number one you can't necessarily make a read if your opponent has a corrupt card number two you can't necessarily play around it like dunk tank like you can't really play around does your opponent have a dunk tank because you don't know it yet pearl tusk people have ptsd of a uh, dragon ball poacher but we don't really know how good uh like let me let me try that again people have ptsd of dragon ball poacher four mana eight eight and how impactful that was and now you have that as an option but you have that as an option for everyone it doesn't have to be with dragons so you can see these cards are really powerful if they go off but the question is are they going to go off because if this is the late game and you're top decking stuff then they're pretty bad or some of them are just like pretty bad if this is the mid game you might not have the opportunity to play them so it, it creates kind of like another swingy meta which hope which people hoped we were getting away from with a lot of the like descent of dragons cards going away and so i'm not sure if this is good for the meta uh, the corrupt is definitely a positive mechanic so i i give these cards like if I score them on 100, I give them generally about 10 to 15 points each for uh, how good they are. Like, if a Fairground Fool, uh, let's see here. If this is like, this is probably like about a 70, give or take. A 3 mana 4 3 taunt. That's hard gun. That's about a 70. Uh, maybe low 70s. The Corrupt, gain plus 4 health. So now you have a 3 mana 4 7 taunt. And I ended up giving that a 90 just because that's like great, great stat distribution for Priest. But in general, the cards are going to be, they're going to gain like about 10 or 15 points on their actual score for the corruption. All right. So that, uh, okay. Uh, before I go on, before I move on to the next one, uh, just very, very quick things here. Number one, 
uh, when I rate the scores, I have a written tier list that has my score and a much more in-depth thought process of why I like each card. And so that is below, and you can read that. Uh, that has a more specific score. So when I score here, I'm going to use a star system. So six stars is generally a card that is 100 plus. Uh, if, if any card is like 130, I would say a seven star. If it's 130, then that's a card that it, it should not exist. It needs to be, it has to be nerfed. Uh, six star cards, probably they're too powerful. They really should be nerfed. But anyway, so six star, any card that I would rate 100 or more. Five star would be any card that I would rate from a 90 to a 100. Four star would be any card I would rate from like a 75 to a 90. Three star would be any card I would rate from about a 60 to a 75. Two star would be any card from like a 40 to a 60. And then a one star card would be anything that is 40 or under. And in general, 40 or under, you don't want to take. So one stars, don't take. Two stars, you take them just to fill your curve. Three stars, uh, they're better than the two stars, but they're not really going to change the game. Four stars, these are really kind of like what? Uh, these are kind of the cards you want to build your deck around. Five stars, these are just like absolutely great cards. You always want to take them. And six six stars, these are cards that are so good, they really shouldn't be in Arena. That's the in-depth, uh, that's the short version of how I rate these. Uh, I base my ratings off the Hearth Arena rating scale. So a lot of these cards, like, uh, for example here, uh, the Pearl Tusk. When I rated it, I made a direct comparison to um, Faceless Corruptor. And to me, I value Faceless Corruptor more than this. So when I'm scoring my cards, when I'm doing the star ratings, I'm saying, okay, Faceless Corruptor, this is like a 90, so it's definitely below that. And then I have to figure out kind of where it is. So I'm using Cartharina there as a reference. So that's how I score. Um, at the end of the entire video, I'm going to be doing a not necessarily class review or like class prediction, but more which class I'm most interested in from like what cards they have and how that piques my curiosity. All right. And then after this, I'm going to do neutrals first this time. And because I'm going to go get dinner after neutrals. And then after that, I will go through the classes and I will do my class prediction. All right. So I will see you guys in the next video.